Hello, welcome and thank you for joining me today. I wanted to share with you my Keystone project. What I did for it was create six DIY thrifted looks in the fantasy genre for queer and gender non-conforming Quest students. The reason I wanted to do this project was to both elevate the individual who I was working with and reject normative notions about how a person should and can look. DIY means do it yourself. It's a method of production that relies on trial and error, on community effort and knowledge, on rejection of expertise, and using lots of times what we already have around us to either create something new or fix a problem that you could rely on a professional for. I firmly believe that DIY creation and culture has the potential to foster self-reliance, creativity, and self-confidence in both individuals and communities. DIY subcultures have the potential to resist hegemonic notions of gender, sexuality, hierarchies, and binary identities. In creating one's own art, whether it's through fashion, like for me, or music, or food, we can create entire new identities, radical new life courses, and new conceptualizations of ourselves that we might have never known about before. So queer in my keystone refers to everything that is at odds with the normative, the dominant, and the heteronormative. It's supposed to be an all-encompassing term that really represents everything weird and wonderful about things that don't fit into the proper molds that we've defined in our society. I'm personally non-binary and I identify as queer because it feels like a more complete term for everything uh, that I understand about myself. So I wanted to work with other gender non-conforming and queer students at Quest when I was making this project because I wanted to showcase and celebrate queer bodies and individuals through collaborative costume making, makeup design, and photo shoots. A little background about myself and why I got interested in this project. I grew up in a really small town in Alberta and I was a really obviously queer kid. I was completely enamored with the fantasy genre growing up as well as really extreme aesthetic subcultures like punk and goth and fairy key. Being a kid that stuck out in lots of ways that I didn't really understand until now, I felt like fantasy worlds had a potential to kind of take me out of the feeling like I didn't fit in. And as I consumed so much of the fantasy genre, I started wanting to not only watch it and read it, but also emulate it. So when I was 16, I made my first ever costume. It was super ugly and poorly constructed, but that was the first thing that launched me into this dabbling in the costuming arts. My Keystone exists within a consumerist, capitalist, and patriarchal society, but it really attempts to unsettle binary notions of gender norms and appearance expertise by celebrating DIY queer fashion. One of the reasons I wanted to do this was because growing up femme and queer, I felt like there were always these rules that I'd never consented to that were really picky about things that you could or couldn't wear or what colors you should stay away from and shapes that were only allowed for certain genders and certain ages um, and everything just felt so arbitrary because it's all just materials and colors and minerals and pigments so like the fashion and beauty world felt like a space that fostered a sense of social conformity and self-doubt. And this is something that I wanted to reject completely within my keystone. I also wanted to dispel the idea that we need to purchase brand new clothing. I wanted to really make visible and obvious the beauty of queer culture and queer people and to elevate the people that I worked with and demonstrate the pleasure of breaking from normative expectations. The first costume I made came out of a conversation with my best friend, Ren Gomez Montoya. We were sitting on their bed as the sun was setting and they were discussing their favorite color. The temporary electric blue the sky becomes on certain nights when the sun sets in a particular way. Immediately, I asked if they wanted to embody a figure based around the concept of dawn and dusk. We talked about gender and how the same way male and female aren't two binary opposites, that the day and the night aren't either, instead being a collection of millions of individual possible variations that exist on a spectrum. That night, in their room, I started sketching out the first design of their costume, and the next day I went searching for materials. The final result included a halo-like headpiece with glowing lights, a skirt with pillow stuffing acting as a cloud and lights, a painted sun and a velvet shirt with little silver stars, and a large cape. One of my favorite things about starting this project was seeing how their demeanor changed when they were in costume. People have all these facets of themselves that are so beautiful and varied, 
Seeing someone feel ethereal and beautiful and pose for pictures as they feel pride in themselves was something I won't forget. My next collaboration was with Amanda Woods, who, after seeing my costume work with Ren, discussed a collaboration with me. I told them I wanted to make a wizardy look and I wanted to practice my fake beard skills. They were super down and together we came up with the concept of a mushroom being with a moss beard. I think the final result is pretty wizardy looking. The costume includes a giant Amanita mushroom hat and a heavily layered frilled gown with a thrifted skirt with all these scraps of thrifted scarves. Once this costume was done, I decided I wanted to make a companion piece to Ren's costume. I wanted to make some more celestial deities to go with Ren, so I asked them if they had any friends in mind that they'd like to be photographed with. We asked Okongo, who was happy to help. Making a costume for Okongo was my first time ever making a costume for someone who identifies as a man, and though I was trying to stay away from binary gender roles, I thought that this was a really good time to take a risk and try doing something I'd never made before, which was make pants. And this was, not exaggerating, the most frustrating and complicated part of my keystone. I found pants weird and hard and frustrating to make and the materials I had weren't ideal. The rest of my costumes never ever included pants ever again because I hated this process so much. But other than this, I really really enjoyed making Okongo's costume. It was a super monochromatic look featuring a gold headpiece, a light up cape, wrist cuffs, leg warmers, a sparkling shirt and jewelry that regrettably was left out of our photo shoot. After Okongo's costume, I desperately wanted to make something femme and floral and dramatic in a really flowy way. So I contacted my friend Gerhardt, who was delighted to help. We designed together a ball gown style fairy dress in purple with loads of fake flowers, velvet, flowy sleeves, and a flower crown. Ren helped me take the photos and we had a delightful time in my room spreading extra flowers around and doing makeup in their photos. Again, I was blown away by how much people can change the conception of themselves when they're in costume. So next, I was really inspired by pictures of vintage moth capes that I had seen online. They seemed to have been a thing in like 18th century France and I really wanted to recreate them in my own way. I reached out to my friend Sophie who was really happy to help. We decided that the moth was a motif that we wanted to use because though they're generally seen as negative and creepy little insects in mainstream culture, they're actually incredibly soft, beautiful creatures who are drawn to light and they're symbols of metamorphosis. I managed to collect the rest of the materials I needed from Pearl's Value and Vintage, which is a thrift shop in Squamish that works with the Howe Sound Women's Center. I volunteered there for several months during my Keystone and I am so grateful for all the people I met there and the time I spent. The next day after Sophie and I took the photos of their moth costume, everyone received the email that due to COVID-19 we would be needing to evacuate campus and practice social distancing. This meant for me that I would have to change my whole original Keystone plan. It was kind of fitting that the moth, a symbol of transformation, was the costume I completed right before this time. It was upsetting for me though because my original plan was to have a fashion show with all my models together at the end of my keystone before or after I gave my presentation, but this did not come to fruition. So the final costume I made then was kind of weird for me. I originally hadn't planned to be a model in my own keystone, but I knew that the final costume I needed was a night sky look to complete the trio of celestial deities. But due to social distancing restrictions and COVID, I couldn't exactly have someone else model for me. So I used myself, and to be honest, this was the easiest costume to make because I had a perfectly accurate model, which was my body, to size things on. In retrospect, the keystone would have been a lot easier if I had used myself as a model for each of the looks, but I'm really happy that I didn't. It was really scary for me as a person who struggles with anxiety and perfectionism to involve and rely on others in my keystone project, but it was completely beautiful and transformative for me to have conversations and share time and space with really wonderful queer individuals to try to make them look like a completely fantasy version of themselves. The reactions I got to the costumes and photos from my models were the highlight of my project and I am so grateful to everyone who helped and supported me along the way. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed my presentation, I recommend you try your own hand at DIY fashion and try modifying some of your own clothes. If you'd like to see the rest of my keystone, which includes how I turned all of my raw materials into the final product, as well as more photos of all my models, you can find that on the Quest website at the link provided above. 
Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.